In part one of my moped series, I spoke with Seth Bedwell about the moped aesthetic. In part two of my moped series, I'll be speaking with Tim Pearson and Brett Walker about what you need to know if you pick up a vintage moped. Even if you buy a brand new bike, what you'll learn from Tim and Brett may apply to you after your warranty runs out. Don't expect latte machines, reading lounges, and shuttle service from your local dealership. You're going to end up doing your own maintenance, and you're probably going to have to teach yourself how to do it. Mopeds were all the rage in the 70s, and that's because there was a gas crisis going on. Mopeds get over 100 miles to the gallon, so you can imagine why they are popular. They're popular again, for different reasons. There's a lot to know about mopeds, so let's go find out some more. Let's go over to Seattle Mopeds. All right, so somebody buys a vintage moped, and then they have to take care of it. So what, what do they need to know? The bike is old. Chances are it's, it's been sitting for a while. So the first thing to do is clean the carburetor. It's really important. you got to have the carburetor nice and clean and also the gas tank because chances are there's a bunch of rust and crap in the gas tank. Okay, so if the gas tank has got a whole bunch of rust in it, what, what can somebody do? Can they clean that out or do they have to go buy cream or something like that? What are they going to, what do they need to know about that? Um, if it's if it's really, really bad, you'll need to cream it and get, get a cream kit from any motorcycle shop. It takes a couple days to do. But if it's not that dirty, it just takes a little washing and you right. get all those uh, rust chips out. I don't prefer the cream method because it's kind of messy and unnecessary. And you'd have to take the frame apart probably to rotate everything around, Well, right? not necessarily. Most, uh, most tanks you can unbolt oh. from the the thing but there's a few like this maxi here where the tanks are built into the frame and that's like a, a little bit more trouble in terms of getting everything coated but um, I've done cream kits before and they're really it's just kind of a laborious process and I'm for the go to Home Depot and get a gallon of like phosphoric acid or even muriatic acid and putting that in there right and just letting that eat everything away the only problem then is they'll like dissolve everything in there but it'll take the insides down to bare metal um, you just have to you know, make sure everything's clean inside and then just keep it full of gas. Otherwise, right. you know, exposed to air, it'll rust up again or whatever. But the cream, like, I don't know, I've found the cream kits to be really, like, messy and um, and they're also expensive. I mean, you're, like, spending $35 on a little, you know, thing which is pretty much concentrated acid and you can go buy $10 worth of acid, you know, in a gallon jug at Home Depot. To so. do the whole club's tanks at one time. Yeah, I mean, I've had gallons of acid that... I mean, you got to figure you can reuse it quite a bit. Okay, so you get the tank clean, then you got to clean the carb. What's next? I would replace the tires and the tubes. Right, so the tires are 30 years old, 20 years old. It's probably not a good idea to ride around on them, right? They're probably dry rotted. And the tires are pretty cheap. You can get them at a local moped shop or online. Any right. or any motorcycle shop that has, like, say, Parts Unlimited for a distributor will have moped tires. We have to like go in and be like, can I see the Parts Unlimited catalog? Because if you go and be like, I've got a moped. The motorcycle guys want to talk mopeds with like you could care less and they're right. like oh we don't care anything for mopeds and it's like yeah it's in the catalog so and that's that that's the other kind of thing is like most of what you need you can get locally a lot of people have this thing is like oh this thing's three years old i'll never be able to find parts for it and most like bolts or tubes or tires are um you know you can make cables pretty easily if you need new cables or whatever like you can source a lot of the bare bones sort of stuff and fabricate stuff if you have any sort of slight mechanical intuition. Like when I first started riding p mopeds, I you know, was meeting other moped riders and they were like, you know, I was like, oh, I can't get this running. And it was like some stupid, like they didn't have a brake cable. I'm like, why didn't you just make a cable? And I was like, oh, well, I wanted to get the proper cable. Everyone has this, like, it's got to be stock or, you know, it's got to be like original, which is all well and good if you have a collector's item, but we just ride these things around and right. you got to be able to like replace stuff on the go. So, so you, can you, for cables, can you use a bicycle cable, go down a bike shop? And the problem with bicycle cables is that the, um, they're typically not like as burly as what would be considered a moped or a scooter or a motorcycle cable in terms of like maybe how many threads are wrapped or so forth. You have a gauge of steel that's used. Right. And um, so they'll work, they'll, um, they'll tend to like stretch out easier or over time. Um, but they, I mean, I, I, you know, I lived in a pretty rural town in New England for a while. And so I'd go to like Walmart and buy like the $10 five pack of strings for like a, you know, a 10 speed bicycle or whatever. And you could have two brake cables, a throttle cable and a couple of spares. So right. um, you just have to, yeah, 
spend time with the Dremel and cut the ends off and get NARPs to tighten the ends down when you thread them through. So there's such this like, um, like phobia of mopeds. Like if you walk into a motorcycle shop and they say, I've got a moped and I need to get some parts for it, they like chances are won't want to talk to you. And so, but a lot of times, you know, they'll have what you need. You just have to like get to that point of, of showing them or allowing them to look at their catalogs or whatever. Right, so in other words, you have to educate them about, yeah. about their own parts source. <laughs> it's really amazing. I mean, they're not, I mean, they're fairly esoteric vehicles, but they're not <coughs> like, you can still get stuff really easily. And a lot of like major distrib distributors like still carry like tubes and tires or, you know, certain things um, inside the engines, bearings and seals. Those are just like industry parts, you know, it's like, it's not a moped bearing or a moped seal. It happens to also go to like some sort of industrial press and some part in the like water cooler for a big truck and you just have to like know what the numbers are on those things and go into any like bearing house and get the right part. If you're dealing with an older an older bike, I mean basically um, a lot of that stuff was bushings that wore out, things like that. I mean do they have replacement cage bearings and things like that, new, new versions of the same stuff or is it basically left to people that know what they're doing to kind of modify them to be up, up to the spec now? Well it depends like what it depends what you have per se and like what exactly you're you're looking for but um i can't think of a single moped engine that you couldn't go and buy you can go down to georgetown and walk in and be like this bearing i need four of them and they take it and go somehow or another even if they had to cross reference there's two bearing houses down there that i know of i think one's right past costco but like the first time i rebuilt an engine i went into a napa and i just had of the bearing and, it's, oh. and they got me a whole set of them if you have to replace the points or something yeah then, the then electrical stuff becomes a little bit more right. specific pieces yeah. all right so let's talk about that i mean first we, so we got the gas tank solved we got the carb cleaned out we're gonna put new tires on make sure all the cables are good uh we know we can source some parts but what happens when you come down say, to the electrical parts well, so i need a condenser or i need points where, where am i going to get that and, and what do i need to know about that yeah there's uh, still i mean those cond condensers, you, I think you got to go get a condenser for it. But you can... And I points for it, too. But, like, on a high-tension coil, some people are using V-dub yeah, high-tension coils. Even oh. the condenser, if you go and get a condenser from, like, an old... Anything that was an old 6-volt, like, Volkswagen bug or an old truck or, <coughs> you know, old, like, 50s, 60s muscle car, anything that had old points and condenser, condenser systems that had condensers... You can get those condensers and like wire them into your. Yeah, you'll have to wire it externally. That probably won't fit up on that yeah. state. Oh, right. Points are definitely like points are pretty engine specific. Um, internal coils, um, like your ignition coil and your um, lighting coils, which actually bolt onto the stator plate, those are very specific. The points are specific. Um, you know, obviously, like the piston, the cylinder, the wrist pin, all that stuff's fairly specific to the thing. Rings are pretty specific, but if you know the ring gap and the diameter of the rings, which you can like measure pretty easily, you could probably walk into any sort of like motorcycle shop or dirt bike shop or anything. I lived in Maine and there's snowmobile shops and so it was relatively easy to find like random stuff like that. In terms of like there's very few specific like moped only things to an engine like brake or to a whole moped like brake parts, brake shoes. Um, Maybe the engine seals. Yeah, but you could still you can still get those somewhere. I mean, in terms of stuff that you can't find, like that you have to order f from a specific moped only kind of a place or something like that. Right. Most of it's you know the spark plug uh, boot and wire and cable that comes out of the engine is like. You know, you know, generic. Yeah.